In this video I'm going to take a look at how the elements of a Python list can be accessed. An element of a Python list can be accessed using the index operator that has the following syntax. Here you can see we have a name of a list and then we have the square brackets and in the middle we have a variable named index. Now this index can have the value of 0 upwards so it could be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 and so on depending on how long the list actually is. Consider the following example of a list in Python and we can see that we have the name prime underscore list and we have a five element list and you can see that the content is 2, 3, 5, 7 and 11 and they're examples of prime numbers that's why I've called the list prime underscore list and here you can see we have an index now note the index starts at 0 and goes up to 4 so this one here 4 is actually referencing the fifth element and it's the fifth element because we always have to remember we start the index as 0 so this 3 is referencing the fourth element and we can take this idea forward so for example this which is a one is accessing the second element of the list so if I wanted to gain access to this value of five in the third element I have to use this number so what would happen is we would still have this name here and this index could be replaced by the value of two or index could be a variable that was set to two. Let's consider the following program and here on the first line you can see I have prime list has been assigned this and if you have a look we've got the square brackets and within the square brackets I've got example of integers which happen to be prime numbers and we can see we have 2 3 5 7 and 11 and of course that's what we can see in the list here so this name is bound to an instance of the list class and that instance ie object is storing these values let's show the runtime for this program and we already seen that this line will create this list if I come here you can see we have a print statement and within the brackets we're asking to print the prime underscore list which is this list here and if you have a look at the runtime you can see that what we have in square brackets is 2, 3, 5, 7 and 11 and clearly this is showing us the contents of this list. If we now look at this line we can see we're again using a print statement and have a look in the brackets and we have this and we can see this is prime underscore list and of course that means we're referring to this list because it has the name prime underscore list but have a look in the square brackets we can see we have zero now that's the index of zero which means that this zero is selected from the index which means we're dealing with this element and this two a copy of this two is printed at the output as you can see here this line is more or less the same as the one we've just observed but the difference being here in the square brackets you can see we have two we've chosen the index of two which means we choose this position and this is the element selected and within there we can see we have the value of 5 stored and 5 a copy of the 5 is sent to the console as you can see here and finally this program statement executes and you can see that we are going to be printing the prime list at position 4 and that means we select the fifth element which is this one here because we've chosen the index of 4 so the content of this element namely the 11 is sent to the console and you can see it is displayed here let's consider this computer program here it's somewhat of a nonsense program but we'll use it nevertheless to highlight how we can access the various elements of a list in Python now the first line here we know will create a list called prime underscore list and the list will have 
the numbers 2, 3, 5, 7 and 11. So when this line executes, what we're going to get is this. And you can see this list has this name. And if you look at the content, you can see it's 2, 3, 5, 7 and 11. And if we look at the indices, you can see that it goes from 0 through to 4. If we now consider this line, it'll print whatever is in the prime list. So if we look to the runtime, what we can see is this. And that's clearly showing us the content of this prime list. Namely the 2, 3, 5, 7 and 11, as you can see here. Let's now consider this line. And if we look here, we can see that this is referring to the prime list. So it is referring to the list with this name and if you look at these square brackets you can see that it's zero so this is referring to this element and at the moment we can see in this element we have the value of 2 but this is assigned 13 so what will happen 13 will go to this element in the prime list and if you have a look at this element you can see it is changing to 13 because of this so we can see we can assign to an element of a list and in this case we've assigned the 13 to this element of the list now if we have a look at this line another assignment has taken place and on this occasion 17 is being assigned to this and have a look at this and you can see it's prime underscore list and in the square brackets we have a 1. So this is the element being selected because it has the index of 1. And at the moment if you have a look at the content of this element you can see it's 3. But when this line executes what we're going to see stored in here is 17 as you can see. Now this line will assign 19 to this element and of course this element is this one here because the index is 2 and consequently the 5 that you see there at the moment will be changed to the value of 19. Of course if we look at this line we can see the index position chosen is 3 and that is choosing this element which is currently storing 7 but of course we can see here that 23 is being assigned to this element so this 7 if you keep your eye on it will obviously change to 23. Now this program statement you can see is accessing this element position, position with the index of 4, which we must remind ourselves is the fifth element, and you can see that that has been assigned 29. So if we come here, we can see that the element currently is storing 11, but after the execution of this program statement, this will change from 11 to the 29, as you can see. Now this line is going to print the content of the prime underscore list and if we have a look at the list we can now see that this is the new content because we've overwritten what was there before and if you look carefully you can see everything's been overwritten with an integer and the integers in this case are also examples of prime numbers. So when this program statement executes what we're going to see at the output is this and you can see that these numbers are indeed the numbers here that's stored inside the prime list. Now this line is going to print this to the console and if you have a look at this you can see we're dealing with the prime list but we're dealing with this position index 0 and of course that is this element here because you can see that's the index and of course 13 is the content so if you look to the console output what you should see appearing there is the value of 13. Now this program statement is doing pretty much the same except the difference is we're going to this index position here which means we're using this element in the prime list and this 23 will be displayed in the console as you can see here. This is the last program statement of this program to execute and if you have a look we're choosing this index position which is this element so this 29 will be displayed in the console here. So we saw that this line printed the prime list and this is the output and that's the output of the prime list as it was when this program statement executed. 
Now, of course, what's happened here, we've changed the content of each of the elements to a different prime number. So when this line is executed, we can see that this is the output. And you can see that's now the output of what the new content of the same list is, as you can see here. Now, this allows us to confirm the fact that a Python list is mutable, meaning its content can be changed, as you've just observed. Let's consider this computer program. And you can see that the first line is going to produce a list. And it's the list that we've been looking at in this video. So what we will see is this. Now this line will print before the swap prime list. So what we will see at the output is this. And you can see that this string is output here. And the prime list is this lot because we can see that's what's stored in the prime list here. Now what this program is going to do, it's going to swap the contents of these two elements so that the 11 will end up here and the 2 will end up here. Let's consider this program statement here and you can see that this is referring to the prime list at element position 0, which is this element here and it is storing the value of 2. Now a copy of this value of 2 is assigned to this variable and we can show that schematically as shown here. Now this line will go to this element which is this one here and it will take a copy of the 11 and it will assign it to this element. So this 11 will be moved to here as a copy. And if you look, you can now see that the first element position has 11, likewise the last element position. Now, when we move the 11 to here, we overwrote what was there before, which was the 2. Now, that's the reason why we moved it to a temporary variable here, so as not to lose what is stored here, which was the 2. Because if we now go on to this line, what we can see is that this variable, whose content is 2, is assigned to this element, which is this element here. So the 2 will become the new content of this element, as we can see here. Now, this program statement will execute, and it will print out this string after the swap, and it will print out the prime list. And the prime list, if we have a look here, we can see is different because the first element and the last element have had their contents swapped. So if we look to the output, this is what we can see. And we can indeed see that the first element is now 11 and the last element is 2. I would like to take a look at this program statement in isolation. We can see here that I am referencing the prime list at index position 4, i.e. the fifth element of the list. And I'm taking a copy of whatever is stored in there and I'm assigning it to the same list but in this position, index position 0. Now these elements are behaving like normal variables in the sense that if this was a normal variable you would be copying its content to this variable but they're not normal variables they are variables that are part of a list that share the same name but the variables themselves are got at through the index position so the elements of a list behave like normal variables in the sense that you can double the content, you can divide the content, you can process the content in the same way as you can process the content of other variables. And of course, then I'll be talking about numeric variables. So a list essentially is a pile of variables, all with the same name, with a structure superimposed on top that's why we call them data structures, and that structure is superimposed by the use of indices, as you can see from these two examples. We have an indices of 0 and 4, and they refer to different positions 
within the overall data structure. Now the fact that these are numeric allow us to easily manipulate data when they're stored in lists. Before I finish this video, I wish to look at a program that will swap the contents of elements of a list. And here you can see I'm creating a list that has the prime numbers from 11 down to 2. And here you can see I'm printing the list with an appropriate string. So when this line executes, what we're going to see is this here. Before the swap, it's showing us the content of the list. Now this line does the swap and if you look very carefully it's done on one line there was no need for a variable called temp. Now this is because there's something called tuples in Python. Now I'm not going to go into what that means because I haven't covered tuples yet on this channel but I want to show you this approach to swapping variables because most Python programmers will use this approach rather than use the temporary variable which you'll see happens when you use lots of other programming languages. So let's have a look here and what we can see I have a reference to the last element in the prime list and here I have a reference to the first element in the prime list and you'll notice in the middle there's a comma if you come over here, you can see that this is the first element in the list. This is the last element in the list. And you can see there's a comma. Now, in effect, what happens is whatever is stored in here is placed in this one. So the last element's content goes to the first element of the list. Here, the first element of the list is copied to the last element of the list and no overwriting takes place so we don't need the temp variable. So if I now come to here and print what the swap has achieved you can see this and you can see the 11 and the 2 have indeed been swapped. Now if we go to the list here that's what the list looks like when this executes and this line will perform the swap and I recommend that you view the swap in the following way the 2 and the 11 will move as you can see here replacing what is in the various elements the two elements and you can see this now has 11 and this has 2 and there was no need for that temporary variable now how this works I'm not covering here I'm just showing you that this is what many people will use when they wish to swap the elements of a list. And of course, as a piece of syntax, it's pretty straightforward, I would hope you would agree. And what goes on under the bonnet, I'm not going to cover, but it's to do with tuples and unpacking. Anyhow, let's get back to how we can access a list. This is where we get at the content of a list, and you can think of that as the source. And this is the destination of the list. That's how we can change the value of the list by having on this side the destination and having on this side the source where we want to get the data from. So the data that's stored in this element is copied to this element overwriting whatever was there before. And of course this is achieved through the assignment statement. So we can see that they essentially behave like variables but of course they have a structure superimposed on top of them hence they're called data structures check out the supporting website for these videos in addition why not follow me on twitter as i issue a tweet every time i upload a new video